show about sports by people who love sports. Welcome to Sports Isolated. Here's your host, Callum Duck. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. Joining me on the show today is young Ford from the Port Adelaide Football Club, Mitch Georgiades. Mitch, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, going quite well over here. Um, haven't been bored brainless yet, but no, nah, going all well. And isolation's treating you not too harshly? Uh, it's actually yeah, been surprisingly not too bad. Um, so I skipped the self-isolation because coming back to WA, so I, got, I didn't have to go through the 14 days of self-isolation, which is um, a blessing for me. So I've been out um, just trying to get away from Perth as much as possible and... Um, just go surfing and fishing and just keep myself busy in sort of that way. Yeah, cool. Um, Mitch, this is obviously your first year at the club. How have you found the transition into AFL football so far? Um, yeah, it's definitely a big step up. Um, the, probably the biggest thing that I realised is that it's now your job um, and that you're expected to be at the club six days a week from whether it's eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon. So um, probably that was the biggest thing for me, um, that sort of the adjustment from that from where I've last played uh, school football, which was, and club football, um, where you just rock up the training three or four times a week and uh, there for two hours and then go. So that's probably the biggest thing that um, you expected there is such large amounts of time and um, the, not the pressure is always on you, but you're always expected to be to doing the right thing, I guess. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing uh, noticeably for me and just, um, but absolutely loving it. Um, yeah, couldn't think of a better better job to do it, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, absolutely loving it. I think uh, probably your first three months of the club probably panned out as you expected. And obviously the last probably six or so weeks has been a bit of turmoil for everyone who works in the AFL industry. Yeah, it's um, obviously been pretty tough times recently with everything that's happened. Um, gone from one of the highs of my career to, to now a low of my career. Um, where been, haven't played my first game in probably 16 or so months um, and then now not playing again, which is, which is interesting, but everyone's in the same boat, I guess. So I've uh, just got to get it out of the way and hope that footy comes back soon and um, get doing what we love again. So um, ultimately, that's, that's the goal. But um, yeah, it was great first three months, um, everything I've ever wanted and um, I can't wait for it to get back to that stage again. Yeah, so Mitch, can you talk to us about your, your junior footy days? Obviously, it was uh, highly documented before you got drafted to the club that you had some injuries during your um, under-18 year. Yeah, so uh, junior football uh, was a bit of an upset in my, in my draft year where I suffered an injury um, in my underage year um, at, the, at the last game of the season where I just caught, caught the cork. Um, nothing too big that um, turned into something a lot bigger than I expected it to. So um, I sort of had, a, I had three surgeries. Um, which led to a whole year of football, which was something um, that was very tough in the beginning to, to get my head around, um, to miss out on potentially the most important year in your footy so far. Um, so that was a very different way to what I pictured my draft year to be. But it allowed me to focus on school a bit more and make sure um, that my body was going to be right when I came back for testing at the Combine, which was um, we sort of set our eyes on early, early in the year to to get back to that point, I guess, um, and to test well at the Combine. Yeah, obviously you were a bit of a bolt, bolter in most people's eyes at the draft and obviously uh, Port Adelaide recruiting manager Jeff Parker decided to take a punt on you. Did you think that you were, where did you think you were originally sort of going to go in the draft? Um, I sort of spoke to my manager the night before and we sort of planned out what we thought might happen um, and we sort of said, between probably the 17 to 25 range. So uh, from what he from what he heard, so uh, I saw, thought there was a 50-50 chance on the first night whether I'd, I'd get the pick um, and then hopefully go into the second night and get picked up then. But um, yeah, it was still a shock to, to go to Port Adelaide because I hadn't spoken to them all year except one FaceTime, which is um, pretty interesting. Uh, you've just answered my next question, um, obviously. Uh, you had some had very limited contact with Port, but what were the clubs that were talking to you the most in the lead up to the draft? Um, I sort of thought Geelong might have been where I'd end up. Um, I felt like that was a good chance. I'd spoken to them a couple of times, GWS a couple of times, and um, I, I, to be honest, I had no real idea where, as I'd, I'd 
thought I'd go. Um, but yeah, Port Adelaide was not one that I was guessing I was going to go to from what from what I'd experienced so far in interviews and calls. And um, yeah, it was pretty pretty low key from them. Yeah, so you obviously had to move interstate to get your opportunity to play AFL. Uh, obviously, you're a, you're a Perth boy and, and living in Adelaide now. So have you found the transition um, moving from Perth to Adelaide? And I understand uh, that you're, well, when you are in Adelaide, you're um, in a house with Miles Bergman, one of the other um, draftees that the club picked up. Yeah, so it's actually been quite a smooth transition. Um, I guess Adelaide's pretty similar to, to Perth, I guess. Um, it's pretty quiet, pretty laid back and along the coast, which is something I really enjoy being along the coast. So it's been so far pretty easy and all the boys have been amazing and the coaches and everyone everyone at the club um, made me feel really welcome. And um, so absolutely loving it so far and um, settled in really well, a lot better than I expected, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, absolutely loving it. And um, in terms of living arrangement, yeah, I'm in a host family currently uh, with Miles Bergman, um, like you said, who, who's a great kid as well. And... Um, yeah, no, it's good to have another boy with me to just to go through and share the experiences, what's going on and um, bounce ideas off. Was sort of both young at the club and we're trying to figure out what's going on. So, uh, yeah, he's really good to, to live with and very professional, which um, I try to take a little bit out of as well because he's very good at sort of all his diet, um, making sure he's doing the right things at the right time as well. So uh, he's very good in that regard. Yeah, certainly hoping to get Miles on the show at some point. So might have to ask you for a little favour there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll bring him up. Yeah. Um, Mitch, you've obviously made quite an, Im, uh, an impression on the club and um, obviously they took, a, a, I suppose, a little bit of a chance on you based on the injuries that you had in your draft year. Uh, obviously, you impressed uh, a lot through the preseason and then you are lucky enough to make your debut in round one against the Gold Coast up at Metricon. So um, can you tell us, I suppose, about the the week in the lead up to playing your first game and obviously, I suppose, the emotions that came with it? Yeah, so to be honest, in the week up to the lead up to the game, we didn't know if the game was going ahead. So at that stage, we sort of, I was obviously very excited and hoping that we were going to play, um, and hoping that we'd just get to play a game of footy. Um, so I think it was a Tuesday or the Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday morning, I got a call up from Nathan Bassett, the forward line coach, saying that, um, I'd be playing if the game was going ahead and then shortly followed by a call from Ken as well just to reinstate that, which was um, very exciting. And But at that stage, we were told um, my parents wouldn't be allowed to come over um, to watch, obviously, because there was no spectators. Um, so it was obviously very exciting, but a little disappointed that they couldn't come over still over the moon to be playing a game of footy um, in, in the AFL, which is all, all you've ever wanted to be doing, I guess. So that was very exciting. And then on the Friday, we were actually, just before we flew out, I got a call uh, from Hingey saying that, from John Hinge, um, saying that our parents could come over um, for all the first year draftees that are debuting, that um, their parents were allowed to come. So that was great and really exciting. So parents flew over um, on the Friday night and got in early um, Saturday morning to watch the game. Uh, absolutely loved it. It was such a great experience. And Hopefully many more to come, but um, yeah, it was absolutely great fun and loved every single minute of it. It was a bit different playing in front of no crowds, but um, I guess for me, I've never really played in front of 40,000 people, so it uh, wasn't too different. Yeah, so how much do you remember from the actual game itself? Um, obviously, you are able to get a goal on the board pretty early, so how did it feel to you know, get your first touch and your first goal and all that sort of stuff? Um, yeah, I remember my first touch was Ash, I missed the handball to Bokey and it went out of bounds. So I was a bit, <laughs> bit filthy with the first touch. Um, but then after that, yeah, I got my first goal, which was absolutely exciting. I took the mark about 20 metres out and sort of was like, I've got to kick this one. I know I should kick this ball. This, this should go straight through. Um, and so back to my routine. I've been done a lot of work on my set shots over the pre-season. So just back that and then, um, yeah, slotted it, which was absolutely exciting, like amazing. And then just went from there, which is yeah, really good fun. And then I can't remember too much more, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it was a bit of a blur from then on in, but I absolutely loved it. Oh, I think you might remember your second goal because you and uh, Durs did a, a little TikTok celebration. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that was interesting. I'm surprised that actually paid off because um, I sort of went into it. We sort of talked about it like once or twice and practiced it once, but we never really had it down pat. And so I sort of kicked it and he just came out and was like... 
we're doing it, we're doing it. I was like, oh, here we go. And then um, it's um, lucky it paid off because I don't know how it did. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing. So it sort of worked out quite well. But um, yeah, that, I don't know if we'll be seeing that again. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have to come up where Durs has obviously got his bow and arrow, so I think you, uh, you, you might need to come up with something as well. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll have to think of something, especially if we're playing in front of no crowds. I have to make up some sort of celebration, but I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, I, think, uh, I think you've got plenty of time to do that. I think you'll be around for a while. Um, Mitch, what do you do outside of football? Um, you know, are you studying or anything like that? Are you looking to... Um, Obviously, Sammy Hayes has got a you know an interest in music. Did, what what interest do you have outside of football other than surfing? Um, I obviously like to surf and play a bit of golf as well and fish and those sort of outdoor things as well. But I'll look forward to studying um, as soon as I can. So probably um, initially I was going to start in the second semester and bring up uni um, and do a commerce degree to begin with, but I uh, haven't really thought of what I'm going to do now. Um, so, but I'd like to start studying as soon as possible and go from there. Uh, whether pick up a commerce degree um, and look at doubling in, in an engineering degree as well. Um, so we have to figure out what, what I'm doing, but um, something along those lines. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you've got some, some pretty cool stuff planned out for the future. Um, Mitch, what are the plans, <laughs> Mitch, what are the plans for yourself both on and off the field in the future? Obviously, we everyone hopes that footy comes back at some point this year and you know, um, hopefully you can play a few more games and establish, establish yourself in the best 22 at the power. Um, I suppose, how, how do you assess your first year when we eventually get back? Um, just to take it game by game and sort of see what happens. I guess you can't really plan too far into the future and just go quarter by quarter, uh, game by game. So I um, haven't really thought too much about what I want to succeed by the end of the year, but just focus on each, each training in front of me and each game in front of me in each quarter. So um, obviously would still love to be playing um, as much AFL footy as I can um, and just play, play what I've been playing and just keep following that up. So um, that would be ultimately my goal right now. Um, in terms of future, obviously I'd love to establish myself in the best 22 um, at Port and then off field, like I said, get my uni degree done as well and, um, go from there and hopefully prepare for life beyond footy. Yeah, so um, do you have any, uh, I, I didn't prepare you for this question, but do you have any, you know, good story? I know you've been at the club a short time, but good stories, uh, any good change room stories so far? Any good change room stories? Any, um, any good banter? If you get Zach Butters up, um, his Tom Rockliffe um, one training session, we all went up for lunch and um, Rocky goes, oh, Zach, where's your car? And Zach goes out and looks at the, out the balcony. Um, Zach Butters' car's parked in the middle of the training oval at Alberton. Um, and that got a bit of a laugh. So that was probably one of the funniest experiences I've had at the club so far, especially it was in my first week as well. So that definitely, I definitely remember that. Yeah. Mitch, thank you so much for joining us on Sports Isolated. Been a real privilege uh, chatting to you again. Good to see you. Um, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we can get a few other of the, uh, the boys on and um, hopefully you can play some more games of footy later in the year. Perfect. Thanks so much for having me and stay well. Yeah, you too, mate. For those of you who are watching at home, thank you very much for tuning in. Please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.